Hello, and welcome back to Tales of Bristoria. Uh, let's jump into this thing. Uh, why reload? Um, I got a bit of an update for y'all on Pokemon. Um, I am... Uh... 95% sure that it is not happening this weekend. Take a look at this. Because I have not heard back right. from um, Sam. Show him how I freed's crew can sail. <coughs> so we're gonna have a little um, chat about that. You want me in? Fine by me. I'll follow your orders. Eleanor. Um. Uh, let's look at her. For a minute. So yeah. Um. I have not heard back from Sam, so there's a good chance that uh, it's not happening this weekend, and. When we do continue, uh, before we do, me and him are going to have a little chat about this. Um, because I really don't care if he wants to continue, um, sorry that, continue doing it and having the race but at the same time I'm not gonna hunt him down try and get this done and if he doesn't want to doesn't um, yeah, if he doesn't want to that's fine tell me and then I will um, do the nose lock by myself I ran to buy another lock by myself. Um, but I cannot sit and keep guessing and keep trying to hunt him down. So, I guess that's my little rant and um, two cents on that for right now. So let's do something else, something fun. <coughs> um, sorry about that. Uh, let's play some Tales of Storia. Got some boots. Let's see, are those boots gonna be any good for Velvet? Nope, it's gonna have to be exactly the same. Well, nope. Boot. Boot! Yeah, lose attack. I don't want to lose attack. Let's see what else is around here. Let's check. Got that. Let's hide it over here. <coughs> I see that code red. We're gonna um, run over there and do that thing a little fight. So, as we need to go across the bridge. Just a rock. 
take it if you want. I think it's really rare. The way it sparkles. I think it might even be bright steel. Bright steel? Never heard of it. Yeah, it's actually a rare metal used to forge weapons and stuff. You don't find it just anywhere. If there's bright steel here, that means we must be in either Endgand or Islegand. Both are a long ways off from Midgand. I doubt the Abbey has many people stationed out here. That's our pirate! Arr! Here there be treasures shiny and sentries few! At the very least, this can mean we'll be left alone for a while. Nice find, Luffy said. Thanks! Now wash your hands. Okay. The only way to learn where we are is to find someone to ask, I guess. Hmm. What's eating you, Luffy said? If people say you can't judge women at face value, does that mean you can with men? Sure. Men are simple creatures. Men are simple. Oh! You talk like you're an expert in all things masculine. But you can only speak for your own family. As if you're one to judge. And I'm sure you've charmed a magnificent lord to be your lover. Sure. What does he look like? Is he tall? None of your business. Don't tell me. He was always on the other side of a swinging door, so you only saw his feet? <gasps> I see. What a lovely crush that must be. I read that story. It was a book called The Legs of a Man. Oh? I've never heard of it. I've read it too. It's a sad, bittersweet tale. But I enjoyed it quite a lot. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Maybe when I have some free time after killing Artorias. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know if men could be judged at face value. <laughs> it's not often you find bright steel above ground. I hear it's a lot of trouble to unearth, even in the regions it's normally found. Yeah. Mining for minerals takes a lot of specialized techniques and experience on the part of the prospector. They examine the soil, the water, the plants, and so on, where the same mineral was found before. Then search similar environments for the next big find. Sure, but it's not like they succeed every time. It's all a big gamble. Isn't there a simpler way? I read in a book once that you can use a pendulum to find water and metals underground. It's called dousing. What's dousing? You hang the pendulum so it's facing the ground. Then you chant the magic word, Magic Kazam, and wait to be amazed. The little bit of ore on its tip will sniff out buried treasure in underground lakes like a bloodhound on a prickle boar. You don't seriously believe this. Eh, it's just like fortune telling. You win some, you lose some. That's why they call it prospecting. So, if pendulums are used for fortune telling, why the hell is Zavid running around using them as weapons? He uses wind to control its trajectory. I think it's easier for him to manipulate pendulums in a fight than something like a whip or a rope. Oh, that makes sense now. That seems pretty clever. He's probably also doing it to make himself stronger, too. Malakim broadly fall into four elemental types. Earth, water, wind, and fire. Each strong or weak against the others. Wind beats Earth. Savid is a wind Malak. So when he obtains Earth element minerals, his own strength is boosted. I never realized Malakim could be so calculating. Then if pendulums react to a Moloch's powers, maybe they can actually do this dousing stuff like Magilu says. Yeah, it's worth taking that thing seriously. Zavid might like to joke around, but when it comes to fighting, he knows full well just what he's doing. He puts an awful lot of thought into that weapon of his, if you ask me. You don't? I spare all my thoughts for my sweetheart. Yeah, right. You just like to cause trouble without putting much thought into anything. Uh, you wouldn't be wrong, Bella. You better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Get the hell out of the way. Oh, 
Stop, stop, stop. They're not all that strong, just no. Stop fooling around. But I'm serious about my fooling around. Do, 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 do. What do we have here? Got that. Um. <coughs> Question is, can we get down to that cold red yet? It's literally right on us. I can see it down there. You there. Got a moment? Gah! Are you guys with the sword breaker? <coughs> the what? G get away from me! I'm sorry, alright? Real class act. Attacking as you apologize. <laughs> My sword! Please, mighty demon, I beg you! I'll do anything, just spare me! I only wanted to ask you something. You don't have to worry. This woman here is an exorcist. Huh? R right. I'm Eleanor, a Praetor exorcist. Please, remain calm and hear our questions. You do look like an exorcist, but what are you doing with ruffians like these? Top secret Abbey business. That's all I can say. Now, can you tell us where we are? And are there any ports nearby? You don't know? You're on Cadnix Island in Islegant. The port is at the other end of that ravine. I'll send a Sylph Jade to the Von Altia. Thanks. One more question. Who's this sword breaker? Ah, he's a demon. Causes lots of trouble around these parts. He only attacks sword fighters, and he breaks their blades. He's even taken down a number of Praetors. Hence the name Swordbreaker. He wields a fine sword, clearly forged in a foreign land. I tried to find his lair to steal the weapon for myself. But that's when I was attacked. A foreign sword? I'd be careful if I were you. If he spots that sword on your back, <laughs> You'll be in a world of trouble. Sounds like a real nasty fellow. Well, he tries to pull anything on this demon, and he's in for one munchy crunchy surprise. <laughs> you folks are all crazy. Either way, I'd say this is a blessing in disguise for you. You're lucky to still be alive. Take this chance to abandon your life of crime. Did you really give him a lecture? Hmm. Can you read any of this old writing? No. I've studied many languages, but I've never seen script like this before. Can you read it, Eleanor? I've never come across this language either. Where did you find a rare tome like this? Um, w well... It was a lucky find at the capital. What can I say? The kid loves to read. I was surprised to see how many Malakim like to read. Genfu does a lot of reading too. I didn't know that. It's true. 
I'm not sure what he's been reading, though. Did someone call for me? Bienfu, do you like to read, too? Oh, yes! Books are a treasure trove of knowledge! But I'm a greater Malakim, so the literature I enjoy might be a bit above your level, Lapiset. How to talk a human female into becoming your vessel. And... Physically escalating with cuties. <laughs> Bien? Physically escalating. What does that mean? You, you don't really need don't know. need to know. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm confiscating all of these. And I have some questions. Bien Fu, you better be ready for a thorough interrogation. Bien! <laughs> <laughs> You look like you're having fun, Roguro. Well, I'm a Yaksha. A Yaksha? A spirit of war? Yeah, a demon that lives for combat. But this Swordbreaker has cut down Exorcist with its foreign blade. Aren't you scared? Of dying, you mean? Yeah. I'm not afraid of dying. It's more that I'm afraid of not being alive. Huh? Fighting is my life. It's all I want to do. So I fight. That's what living means to me. Ah. <sighs> living only to kill. A demon is always going to be a demon. Well, if you're gonna be blunt. <laughs> Any more skits or are we done with the skits? Slow. Hello, Neon. Gonna get himself in more trouble. I'm surprised Margaret didn't have anything to say about that. Not for sure she would have. Ah, bad. All right, let's fight this thing. Work killer. We're finished here. Let's go. There we go. Oh, we need to upgrade equipment. Need some better equipment. I'll end this quickly. <laughs> 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 I won't 
improve by fighting weaklings. No, but in this scenario, I'm not sure. So let's see what's over here. That's the way that we're supposed to go. Hmm? What's wrong? An enemy. That sword. Is that Stormquell? A demon wielding a foreign made sword. You must be the sword draper. But I'm just close. I want this! Form zero! Not much for conversation, are you? Silence, they say, is only no mercy! Won't that be He's still moving. I'll take this one. Come and get me! Good! A challenge! Look out! Don't interfere! What do you think you're doing? Touch me and I'll kill you. I'm sorry. I just got a little riled up. Do you know that demon? No, but I know his sword. A blade called Stormquell. Stormquell? Whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Let's just get to the portal already. Back in, cross the bridge. See where that takes us. Ah, no point. You sure you want to mess with me? A short weapon is effective up close. And training can help it get even closer. Mine gets as long as I want it to be. Nova did all the work, so shouldn't it have been her post battle scene? Not those guys. Nope. But back here. No. Okay, now. I 
go there yet. Y'all just stay out of the way. Lavi <laughs> said, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I thought he was going to kill you. Yeah, I know. You were just doing what you thought was right. Yeah, maybe so. That's good then. I didn't give you a clear enough warning to stay out of it. If it ever happens again, I'll give you a proper warning. You really don't want me to help you? Even if your life is at risk? Yep. Why? Actually, I'm not too sure myself. Huh? There's somebody out there I need to defeat by my own hand. I want to strike him down. I want to triumph against him. But to do that, I need to be a better swordsman. Someone you have to defeat. In a sword fight, yeah. And I'll do anything to ensure I come out on top in the end. No matter how much it costs me. Life, limb, hell, even my heart and soul, I'll pay it. Those feelings have been so central to me for so long. I lost my dang humanity somewhere along the way. Why do you need to win that badly? <laughs> to be honest, it beats me. Maybe it has to do with me being a demon. Or maybe that's why I became one. Either way, it's more important to me than life itself. More important than life. But still, I owe you for saving me back there. There's no victory pose in store for me if I'm dead. Ugh, okay. Is that how you thank someone for saving your life? Huh? I'm just being honest with the little guy. And no offense and all, but why do you care? You don't even think it disrespectful? You truly are a demon. Yep, big old demon. Elena's gonna have a hard time with these guys. Actually, I think that's the way that we want to go. Yeah, that's dead end, dead end, dead end, dead end. Another warp point. Up we go. And where does this take us? Oh, well, let's go back this way, back quick. I think this is. Yeah, right, that's a shortcut. So this is the other side. <coughs> yep, let's get a cat. Drop in the left. Stay away. Going. <coughs> God damn <coughs> Ah, yes, I still have a cough. Yes. No, it's not from COVID. Yes, I am tired of constantly uh, explaining that. You know, in a few years looking back, well, Hmm, now why does that name sound so familiar? Hey, Eleanor? Thanks for stepping in earlier. Think nothing of it. My orders are to protect you, so I did. Oh, I see. Of course, orders are no orders. I'd save anyone under threat from a demon. Well, how noble. Oh, I got it! Got, got what? The 
tragic tale of the sword storm quell. Gather round and listen, oh grimy travelers. Once, centuries past, there was a sword renowned the world over for its peerlessly sharp edge, its forger shrouded in mystery. So mighty was each swing of the sword, it produced howling winds that could level mountains. No other sword could match its power. The people, in their superstition, began to call it the Godblade. This Godblade, is it Stormquell? Shush! The tale is merely beginning. Now, there was one man who was truly enamored with the Godblade. His name was Kurogane, a blacksmith of wondrous talent. His heart was set on forging an even greater sword, and he had a name in mind for this sword. Stormquell, the sword to conquer the Godblade's roaring winds. And did he make it? Kurogane forged scores of challengers to the Godblade, but each would-be Stormquell was shattered by the implacable howling wind. Some say the wielder of the Godblade chopped off his head. Others say he took his own life. The truth is lost to the dusty cobwebs of history. But perhaps he, and his grudge towards the Godblade, somehow yet live. A grudge that spans centuries. You hear tall tales like this all the time. That sword and its inscription we saw were probably just inspired by the legend. Perhaps. But if that's the real Stormquell, we should all sleep with one eye open tonight. What makes you say that? Because that godblade Kurogane wanted so desperately to top has been passed down through my family for generations. Its name is Stormhowl. In other words, we could well bump into your armored friend again. Let's hurry it up. Uh, like I was saying before, uh, that's good. Let's make it safe. Uh, you know, in a few years looking back on these videos or watching these videos back or people in the future watching this are going to be questioning what the hell is COVID and why is he constantly being asked about it because let's face it and not getting political in any way but COVID in a few years is going to be a footnote and everyone's going to be wondering what the hell is COVID So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, do, do, do. What do we have? Thank you. What's back here? This way. And then there's nothing over here. Okay, let's look around just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Yep. Hmm. The golems. What do you want? Go away. Listen, Luffy said. What is it? You can't trust her just because she said she'd protect you. Orders or no orders. Remember, Malakim are just tools to exorcists. But... she really did protect me. I know you feel you owe her for that. But do you have to look so happy about it? Sorry. I'm not asking for an apology. I just want her to know that we've all got an eye on her. No matter how close you two get. I want her to understand that I come first. So... What do you want me to do? Let's see. To put it simply, I'm number one, and Eleanor is number two. Got it? I get it. You're number one, and Eleanor is number two. Right. I'm number one. Wait, this is kind of stupid, isn't it? It's alright. I understand. 
Uh, that's not what I mean. Uh, Velvet wants to be top dog. Eleanor's a threat. And Velvet wants to be big sister to uh, Luffy. Eleanor also wants to be big sister to Luffy. And yeah, they. Yeah, there's a top dog fight going on. I think there's more colorful term when it's two um, females, but I'll leave that all to you all. Ooh, another cool red. Mm. Let's see if we can beat that guy up. <coughs> ah, do do do. Bam! Cat soul. That looks like a seal of some type. What's that doing here? Oh, I think these were used to keep robbers away. Like wards around old king's tombs. I've read about this. There's a trick to the stone. It reacts to heat. Heat, huh? Then there's only one thing to do. stuff and upgrade stuff yeah this is gonna be the cold bed So, okay, the code reds are getting a little bit more tough now. But I'm pretty sure equipment will solve that problem. So let's go this way. Is that a turtle's there? 
alone. Down there? No. no. Oh, yeah, there's a cat. So... Yep, there's a turtles. I think we need to go pick on the turtles. Cadnex Island is through the tunnels beyond the sealed door. Wait, was that information free too? <laughs> yep. Okay, um. It's weak. Velvet needs. No. Don't sacrifice attack. for Rokuro. Uh, uh, no. Oh. Oh. Okay, equipment. Do, do, 
best we can do for now actually um it's mantle
No. Well, if you aren't the craziest demon, your body's harder than your own sword. Who's this? That's Lord Shigure, one of the only two legged exorcists in the entire abbey. <laughs> A legate. Same as Melchior. Eleanor, fancy meeting you here. What the hell happened to you? You get captured by a demon? Or are you a turncoat? Uh, I... I'm... Eh, don't matter. I do my own thing. I got no standing to tell you how to live. Still, today's my lucky day. Never thought I'd encounter the one and only Stormquell. Shigure, I think someone over there wants your attention. He looks lonely. <laughs> You're right, I'm being a jerk. Just can't pass up the chance to tease my little brother. Can I, Rokuro? Your brother? You haven't changed a bit, Shigure. You go blind, dumbass? I'm bucket load stronger now. You're the one who hasn't changed, I bet. You still hung up on trying to take me down? The one you want to beat in a fight? That's him? I'm not who I was that day either, brother. Oh, wait. You're a demon? Ha! <laughs> now it's getting good. But I wonder, has that really changed anything? When my real storm howl breaks your sad reject again, you gonna piss yourself like last time? I'll handle him. Luffy said, no matter what, I need you to stay out of it. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's been too long since we crossed swords, brother. Shut up! You're dead! I'll make you regret sparing my life last time! Hold up! For what? Hold up! Goddamn! But I'm this close! I won't miss! Form zero! Truly! You're feisty as a demon. I like it. But alas, I think our fight's over. Rokuro! What? My... my body! I said stay out of this! We're just getting started here! No backing down for you this time, huh? But we're done for today. Shigurei! Oh, calm down, Rokuro. We could have a real fight sometime if you actually brought a decent sword. Go ask that old bastard there to make you one. I'll be waiting. Huh? Who? That demon in the armor, Kuragane. The blacksmith! From the story! I'll be waiting for you at Port Cadnix. Unless you can beat me, you ain't getting off this island. Who are you to decide that? You got a problem with it, lady? <laughs> Best of luck, you demons. You'll need it. Lord Shigure, sir! I'm on a high-level mission! Eleanor, babe, I get it. You've gone rogue. Have fun with that. I see you again. I'll kill ya. Uh, uh... He wasn't even trying yet. You can tell. But if we all fight him together... That won't work. But there is another way. What are you talking about? What way? Follow me. Rogoro! Velvet, aren't we 
going after him? This is his fight. It has nothing to do with me. But Shigure said he'd be waiting at the port. He may be a nutball, but I don't think he's fool enough to let us slip past. Exactly. And as a swordsman, he's even more skilled than Artorius, and that's saying something. We're mice with our tails pinned, and the cat's licking his lips. At the very least, Korogane seems to have some kind of plan. Fine. We'll hear what he has to say. Alright, that's sweet. Alright. Oh. What was that fat cat creature with Shigure? You mean Morgrim? She's a Moloch. She just looks different. And? And what? She has all the abilities of a Moloch. I'm not trying to keep anything from you. All I know is her name and that she's a Moloch. Huh. Lord Shigure is an exorcist legate, but he's also a warrior who can match exorcists or demons even without the use of Moloch arts. Since no one has ever seen Shigure use an art, Morgrim is considered one of the Seven Wonders of the Abbey. The Seven Wonders of the Abbey! No one knows Morgrim's capabilities, or even the details of Shigure's pact with her. No one! Except me, that is! Huh? This is all highly classified, but... Morgrim is incredibly lazy. The price she demanded of Shigure for making a pact with her was... Grooming and defleeing! Anything else? Oh, and on a point of sensitivity, she's chubby, not fat. She may be our enemy, but she's also a woman. You should try not to hurt each other's feelings. <sighs> Anything else? Her thick eyebrows are all the rage with Malakim, so much so that false eyebrows are expected to be the next big thing. <sighs> well, if he's that strong without Moloch arts, I don't want to see what he's like with them. Okay, so... Shigure is gonna be a problem. Remember correctly, <coughs> she get. What were you thinking, Eleanor? Attacking a legate like that? Uh, well, uh, I just thought Rokuro was going to die if I didn't intervene. Oh, you'd kill one of your own allies for a demon? I, I acted without thinking. Sometimes I'm too soft-hearted to a fault. I'd say it's less that, and more just stupidity. You're supposed to be protecting Lafayette. Don't get yourself into trouble you don't need. Even if one of her own is in danger? Even then. This kid must be really important to her. All right. I understand. Lafayette. Next time she acts up, stop her. Understand? We don't know what she's got up her sleeve. Uh, okay. Thanks for not telling on me, Eleanor. And I'm sorry I hijacked your body. I understand how it feels to want to protect your friends. The problem's with those demons, not you. But I think Velvet has the capacity to feel the same way too. At least when it comes to her brother. Is that why you're staying with her? I'm... I'm not sure. It's hard to say. I have to figure out what's going on with this group. If I ever hope to wrest the child from them. Yeah, no, you know that's not gonna happen. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. I see you over here. Uh, but I'm not really gonna go. There we go. What's that? Things up. Uh, 
Uh, this is where we need to go. Let's go this way and see what this leads. Okay, that's the way that we want to go. So we don't want to go this way yet. So let's come up this way and see where this takes us. Dead end. in the battle. Yep, yep. Ah, ah. Oh. Nope. Yet, so. Yep, it's one dead end. <sighs> then let's go hit the other dead end and then go meet up with Rokuro. Just a little over an hour. And go up this way now. What's back here? Cat. Oops. Do, 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 do. Oh, yep. All right, let's go meet up with uh, uh, Rokuro and. Is it Kurigani? It's Kurigani. We shall see. Boop.
Run, Velvet, run. I wish you could run faster. And let's go ahead and what are these two up to back here? That's a save box, so let's go ahead and make a save. That's what happens when the legendary blacksmith Kurogane toils so hard, he forgets to die. I gave up everything, thinking of nothing else but forging a sword that could surpass Storm Howl. And before I knew it... You had traded your humanity for demonhood. I see I'm not the only one. So great was your grudge against your brother, the inheritor of Storm Howl. Well, guess we're not so different. You don't suppose you could hammer me up a new sword, do you? I've forged countless blades over these long years, yet not one has proven a match for Stormhowl. And yet you still seek a Kurogane sword? I'll put it like this. No matter how much you've failed across the centuries, you've never broken. Well, I'm the same way. If anything can break Shigure and his god blade, it's the bitterness I carry. Strangely enough, seeing you and your brother has given me an idea that might work. I will forge you a new blade. Should we get some Brightstone? Nope. No need for that. Huh? Should I take it from the top? If you would. My arms are all I'll be needing. What are you doing? Don't be alarmed. I'm just cutting free some raw materials for the sword. You see something new every day. You need his head to make the sword? That's right. With this fine clump of pure resentment, I shall forge your imitation storm howl anew. No. I only keep this imitation as a reminder of how weak-willed I was in the past. To defeat Shigure, I've perfected the art of dual wielding, a secret Rangetsu technique. All right. If that's what you prefer, a pair of short swords it is. We'll wait outside. Alright, I know All we, we can do to now her. is wait God for Rokuro. Alright, let's talk with Magalu. I made the Enfu rush out to the docks to scout the place out. Pretty smart, am I right? I pity that creature sometimes. That Kurogane, though, what a character! Giving his own body to forge a sword, like some kind of ritual sacrifice. Ritual sacrifice? It's certainly something only a demon would do. It was a necessary sacrifice in order to gain power. A necessary sacrifice. What a vicious turn of phrase. Indeed. Still, I can't say I'm not thrilled to see how it all turns out. If what you give is mere meat for a god's morbid lunch, could there be a more trivial sacrifice? But if the offering is one's own body and soul, even a single hair can be portentous. I wonder which he will have been in the end. 
The ship is on its way. Right on schedule. Of course it is. They don't have the Reaper on board. One more thing. Apparently, Shigure is Arturius' bodyguard. So we'll have to face him down sometime. No matter what. It's in our best interest to get rid of him while he's working alone. The problem is, Rokuro can't beat him by himself. Agreed. Shigure is not to be trifled with. Certainly. That's why, when Rokuro creates an opening, we're going to take Shigure out. You want us to meddle in somebody else's private quarrel? If it affects my own quarrel, yes. I suppose I'm in the same position. Besides, I can still use him. There's no sense in throwing his life away. Rokuro's not really a guy to care about the big picture. He might try to hack your limbs off a bit, but he'll get over it. Rokuro, Kurogane, I just do not understand them. You saw them. Demons. We're crazy. Sure, but they go through life with such crystal clear sense of purpose. Even demons have things they're not willing to let go. Or do you think us mere animals, running around killing people left and right? I know, I know. I understand demons still have a certain consciousness, but I look at those two and they seem passionate, like normal people. Well, I've yet to meet a human so passionate he'd chop his own head off. Do you have a purpose like they do? I do, in fact. Ever since Artorius used my brother as a sacrifice. Typical demon nonsense. The Abbey exists to protect the people. Yes, sometimes cold, painful decisions need to be made to protect the many, but they never stoop to human sacrifice. Besides, as Shepherd, Artorius will cleanse the world of- If that's what you think, ask the precious Shepherd yourself. Ask him just what he did three years ago. He wouldn't. He'd never- Rokuro wants to slay his brother, even if it kills him. And Kurogane had his own head lopped off just to forge powerful swords. How do those two find it in themselves to go so far? It's just how they are. They're demons. Not exactly normal. Yeah, it's scary. But I also kinda admire it. But me, I don't have anything I'm that desperate to accomplish. Not yet, you mean. In time, you'll find something. You really think so? Almost certainly. But don't feel you have to go and risk your life over it. You're not a demon, and you should stay that way. You deserve a normal life. Okay. But never mind. Just the foolish ramblings of a demon girl. Bad, bad news! A group of Praetors have left the docks and are headed this way! They said they were coming to purge Eleanor the traitor! Purge? Velvet, what do we do? We take them head on. And you're fighting with us, Eleanor. An order, I presume. It is. Protect Lafayette and defeat the exorcists. All right. I understand. Just remember, if we lose Eleanor, Lafayette will turn into a demon. I haven't forgotten. But we need to pool all the resources we have. She needs us for her own ends. And we'll use that to our advantage in this fight. Just don't push your luck too far, Velvet. And so recently was she a noble, upstanding young exorcist. How quickly one falls when entering Velvet's dark orbit. Ask me if I care. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Velvet does not care. You want me in? <coughs> Fine. Uh, we still can't go back there, can we? Oh. Alright, let's go ahead and save. alone <coughs> All right. 
Exorcists. Leave us alone. Pray to our Eleanor. You should be ashamed of yourself, cowering to demons. Your collusion could spell disaster to the Abbey if left unchecked. The only possible atonement is your death. <laughs> She's hesitant. Bye. Bop, bop, bop. Die, 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 die. You've betrayed the people and sullied Artorius's ideals. No, that's not. <laughs> Velvet, she's testing me. I know I have to fight. My mission calls for it. But any more of this will kill them. Time for you to die and be purged! Eleanor! I can't do it! I can't kill them! I'm not done yet! There. Now we're even, Eleanor. You've got new swords! Sinister. I like it. I take it you're ready. Yeah. All that's left is to kill Sigure. With me as a witness. <sighs> I... I... Keep on fighting like that, and you'll be killed. And if you get killed, Luffy said we'll lose his vessel. I know that! <laughs> Velvet, wait! You're not going to kill them? I'm just not that hungry right now. I've got new orders for you. Fight the exorcists, but make sure they don't die. Understood. I guess that was as far as Eleanor could go. I think so. Push her any further and she's bound to break. <laughs> Ever the virtuous exorcist. That very virtue is what lets her be Lafayette's vessel. Besides, I can't help but admire her commitment. She's enduring total disgrace to accomplish her mission. How uncommonly pleasant of you. Pleasant folks don't use people the way we do. Yeah, you've got that right. <laughs> Hey, Bien, Phil? I was wondering if I could talk to you about something that's on my mind. I figured it was just about the time that you and I had the talk, actually. I've seen it all, heard it all, and even tasted it all in my time as a Moloch. Ask me anything you want. Thanks. I was hoping you could let me borrow those books you were reading earlier, if that's okay. You mean, how to talk a human female into becoming your vessel? And how to get the cuties? Hey! Keep it down! Keep it down! But you and Madame Eleanor have already formed a pact! Why do you still need either of those books? Well, it's like when we're alone together, things get so awkward. It's hard to talk with her, you know? <laughs> that happens a lot with Malakim and Vessels who are still new to the whole thing. I've been there. In that case, 
I've got an even better book for you. Whoa, you read a lot of books. I'm just an avid learner is all. Now let's see. Oh, here we go. Hot Spring Topics, Bearing Your Body and Your Soul. Being upfront and honest is always the best policy. I... I don't think we'll be bathing in any hot springs together. Do you have anything else? All right, then how about... After Bath Party Games, Dropping Your Defenses and Your Towels. Why do you keep trying to get us naked? I think that would just make things even more awkward. Picky, picky. Tell you what, you can just look at my collection and pick whatever sounds good. Love hacking, living long and loving hard, diary of a diary thief, hands speak louder than words. All classics. I remember reading them when Miss Mogilu and I were struggling to get along. Oh, to be young again. You ever think maybe things would have been easier if you never read these books? Reading the mood. Knowing what to say and how to say it. That one's a winner. A must read for sure. Are you two reading something together? We are. We are. Laffy Set's been worried about that awkward distance between you two, and he came to me for some advice. I've heard his side of the story, so let's you and I grab some tea and talk about what to do about it. Come on! Let's go, let's go! Oh, okay. Knowing what to say and how to say it. I don't think this will help either. <laughs> well... Try not to laugh to that. <laughs> Being Fu is a bad influence on... Laffy. <laughs> and if Velvet finds out, he's a dead cat thing. Uh, so let's go back here and see if we can get that treasure chest. That reminds me. Switch you we have for a to me. <coughs> there we go. Where are T fifteen and not all that much. But, we enhance these things and they're going to be even stronger. I think those, like at the max levels, like, um, Brokudo's strongest weapon. But don't quote me on that. Because that's pretty early in the game to get, get them. <laughs> hey, we can come back here. Grab you. Grab you. Grab you. Ah! <coughs> I was hoping that would be a velvet weapon mm. what time is it oh, we can go for about another half hour I think we'll uh, probably finish up this current plot and then
Um. All right. Okay. Um. This place. Show them um, how I free. Yeah. Finish up the current plot, and then we'll call that good for tonight. Tomorrow we'll um. Go a bit longer and uh, some other. Or maybe do some Yu Gi Oh! and tells. Uh, we shall see. How things go. Um, though I can't guarantee when we'll start. Um, because it seems like my AC has broke again, so I need to go up to the office and um, ask them what the hell is going on. As they s the complex uh, apartment complex sent maintenance to look at it uh, yesterday worked great, and then now all of a sudden it's busted again. So. I think they need to have another look at it. So, okay, we're almost out of here. Yeah, what's this? Oh, grab you, grab you, grab you. You're like, right, where I want to go. You just popped out of nowhere. Ow, shortcut. Can't take that. Let's see, we go back up this way. Found cats. Oh, they don't give us anything. Hey, Rokuro. Why did he call your storm howl a reject? Well, you see, when blacksmiths make swords, they don't just make one at a time. They make a whole bunch. The best one of them all is the one that gets presented to the swords commissioner, while the rest are tossed aside. Huh. I didn't realize the standards were so high. The head of my clan gets the real Storm Howl, and his siblings get the remainders. So one is real, and the others are imitations? I guess so. Shigure has the real one, and... Yeah, guess that makes mine an imitation. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply... Don't apologize. You got me to finally realize something. It might just be why I'm so hung up on beating him. Oh. And to Velvet? Which Luffy said is real? And which is the imitation? Oh. What are you saying? She means my name. It's the same as Velvet's brothers. Huh? The one who went and got sacrificed by Artorius. Surely you are mistaken. Our shepherd would never do such a thing. But what else could make Velvet hate Artorius so much? I... I don't... So you have a truth, and Velvet has a truth. Now which is the real one, and which is the imitation? Uh, uh. Margie Luge is causing trouble. That's all she's good for. Stirring up the trouble. And then sitting back and watching the fallout. Which, I admit on occasion I have done that and it's actually quite fun. 
So I don't blame Magu in the slightest. Uh, so let's grab you, 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 bing, 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 bing. Anything around here? Nope. And out we go. Oh, bloody fucking hell. Uh, one more map. Oh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding. Break. Nothing over here, right? Yeah. Go up over here. Okay, we can warp. Uh, got that. And where do you take us? To this. Since we don't have... But we need to shortcut. And that's why, my friends, we look around everywhere. As uh, that would have been a real bitch to find. Not knowing where. Uh, right there, so. I guess you could see it from here. But you have to look really closely to see it over there. You and Shigure both use the Rangetsu style. But to me it looked like you both fight completely differently. Why is that? Our school encompasses two distinct forms. To the outside world, we're known for fighting with a single great sword. But we also study dual short swords should need arise. So, Shigure uses the great sword, and you use the short. In most schools, wouldn't the secondary technique be used primarily in support of the first? That's true for us as well. We learned the dual short swords to provide sparring partners for those studying the great sword. Then why would you handicap yourself against Lord Shigure? He's no mere swordsman. As I'm painfully aware, Shigure is a true master. We trained together since we were small children. I was his sparring partner for ten years. <sighs> his skill with the great sword is godlike. So, in order to beat him, I took up the short blades. To our school, it might be secondary, but it's what I know best. You're badly disadvantaged in reach. If I eliminate my fear, I have a chance. If I can control the terror of being split in half, and I can step inside his guard, he'll have two times the trouble. Eliminating fear, huh? A style for someone who's lost his humanity. Right? It's like you two brothers are the very swords you carry. Huh? Storm Howl, a godlike sword known to all as the strongest there ever was. Storm Quell, burdened by the ceaseless struggle to best the other. One, an exorcist who walks in the light. One, a demon moving through the shadows. The only thing these two polar opposites want is to cut down the other. Precisely! Both are renowned blades. But I don't see what exorcists and demons have to do with it. <laughs> yep. Eleanor does not understand the metaphor. Well, Margulu was going after, or trying to say. Oh, thank you, God. 
Finally, we can leave this damn cave. Wish we could just take these shortcuts. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and make a save. <coughs> so we don't have to do all this all over again. I don't remember the last time we saved. God, we're only one sixth of the way through. Not complaining, but here next week, uh, I believe I have a new game to play. Norman hat, offset. Bought a Norman suit, offset. A new game, and I mean brand new. So we would. Focus with that. <coughs> and then, of course, we'll come back and uh, finish this up. Uh, at some point, ruins better. Mm hmm. Mind to help Moggy Lou. Mm. I think uh, that will help Moggy Lou better. Where are oh, you, Moggy Loop? Eight versus two. She last Magalu quite a while. There they are. Which must mean they took out every one of the exorcists who went after them. Hey, I told them not to bother. Now how did that sword of yours turn out? <laughs> Fine, I'll find out for myself. Rokuro, 
We can handle the exorcists. Go and find your victory. Thanks. All right. Let's get down to business. Not bad. You better not die too quickly on me. I want this to be fun. Come on, bro. Don't hold back. Let's get rid of these guys first. Get over here. This is fine looking swords you got there. No mercy! Wounds that won't be fighting! Put up a good fight, I'll give you that. But you're a frickin' demon. Shouldn't you bring more to the table than pretty damn good Rangetsu style? You don't have what it takes to win against the rightful heir. Don't count me out. Just yet. I've got something to show you! <laughs> Was clever giving up one of your own hands to go for my neck if I was just a second slower I'd be dead now I like it this is what I've been looking for all right let's call it good here listen up if you all want any hope of beating me come find me once you're more skilled and better armed <laughs> you down no matter how many times I lose no matter how many years it takes <sighs> there we go that's the face I'm looking for so vicious it's perfect <laughs> what is wrong with him Shouldn't you be worrying more about your own skin? The entire Abbey knows by now that you're a traitor. Uh, that guy, he was really strong. Yeah, he was. They all are. But we will beat him if we must. No matter what it takes. <sighs> the Von Elty is here. Let's get going. Please, take me with you. I'll make a sword that surpasses Storm Howl yet. I know I will. But for another blade to beat Storm Howl, its wielder must be a swordsman of unmatched skill. Hey, Eisen. Got any room on this pile of wood scrap for a suit of armor? If not, make someone wear it. <laughs> Works for me. You heard him, Kurogane. Many thanks. Okay, we're off to find Grimoire and decipher the book. You know where we're going, right, kiddo? Yeah. We're headed for the Isalt Archipelago in South Gand.
Velvet's demon hand. It's such a mysterious weapon. I can only imagine how much of a threat it will become to the Abbey. This calls for a clear-headed breakdown of everything I know about it so far. It changes shape in a flash, and could devour most anything. How must that feel, to devour something with your hand like that? But it doesn't devour the bandages that cover it up. Maybe they're protected with some sort of special art? Likewise, the rest of her outfit can't be ignored. One would think she wouldn't want to wear such ragged clothing, yet she clearly has no inclination of buying something new. I suppose that could be taken to mean she has some sort of attachment to it. But that top is really big for her. Like it was made for a man! Maybe she wears that outfit in memory of someone important to her. I'd better not touch it then. I know I may not look it, but I really am good at sewing. Maybe I should suggest mending her clothes rather than outright replacing them. On the other hand, that fabric looks like it would be hard to push a needle through. I could be in over my head. But the tougher the fight, the more I get fired up! Of course, Lord Artorius would probably scold me if he heard me talking like that. Who'd scold you for what now? Oh, uh, well, I was thinking about sewing! I mean, your clothes, they're all beat up, and I thought that if I offered to mend them for you, you'd probably scold me, wouldn't you? You'd mend my clothes? Have they been worrying you that much? I mean, not like constantly or anything. It just crosses my mind from time to time. Are you good at it? Yes. I'm told I come across as awkward sometimes, but if nothing else, I'm good with my hands. I see. All right, if I ever need it done, I'll come to you. Good, just leave it to me. Are you feeling all right? You're really sweating. The heat and the cold doesn't bother me at all, but you're a human. So you need to take care of yourself. And if you keep soaking in your own sweat, you'll catch a cold. Besides, I don't imagine it feels that great. You should keep washing and bathing on your own schedule, like however you did before falling in with us. Just let me know and I'll make it work. Because the guys aren't considerate enough to stop and ask you if you need to. Sure. All right. Thanks. That was a surprisingly normal thing for her to say. I probably shouldn't bother with her clothes for now. We girls have to be considerate of each other. Um, take a look at... Yeah. <laughs> this recipe looks real good. <laughs> Oh, Scout ship setting sail. Looking. And I want to check equipment. <coughs> Alright, they're not broken and I didn't lose them. <coughs> I would have been very upset if they would have gone away after I just spent so much money enhancing them. Alright, how long have we been going? <sighs> uh, we'll head... Uh, we'll talk to some people, then we'll head to the next town. And then, um, we'll call it good. So, you guys made it. Whatever happened to that sword breaker? He's been dealt with. What are you doing here? After everything you said to me, I had a change of heart. I quit banditry. Thank you. I'm glad you listened to reason. What do you plan on doing from here on out? I'm heading to the capital. I plan on opening a restaurant for bandit cuisine. Bandit cuisine? Yeah. You get your hands on all sorts of food as a bandit. You gotta use what you have, and still make a tasty meal. Like a wild mushroom omelet minus the eggs. Or highwayman stew. It's like a hunter's stew, but, you know, made by bandits. That sounds... somewhat improper, actually. But I'd still love to visit after you open. Really? All right. <laughs> I'll be an upright citizen in no time. <laughs> Maybe even the kind of man you'd consider spending some time with. I'm rooting for you. Hey, were you actually listening to him? Of course I was. 
It's wonderful he's turned over a new leaf. <sighs> yes, well, but that's a no. She did not actually listen. Hey, you there. That's one impressive sword you got. You know a lot about swords? I'm a novice swordsmith. Been at it for 20 years. Now I'm finally able to make a blade worthy of the name. 20 years? And still just a novice? It's a competitive world out there for a swordsmith, especially here on this island. But I heard many swordsmiths have given up. There's less ore around nowadays, and swords don't work against the demons. True, swords are useless against demons. Unless it's an exorcist that's using them. Kednick's weaponry has always been prized in Midgant. The Abbey recognized our talents, and now, business is booming. All the smiths here are grateful to the Abbey. They're keeping all of us alive and fed. Alright, and one more chat, and then off to the next town, and that's gonna be it for tonight. Eisen, I thought I'd gotten used to you performing Oops. the impossible, but this time, I'm at a loss for words. We heard from the Bloodwings that the Abbey might have taken you guys out. Not this time, but our luck won't last forever. Think of this as a dry run for when I really kick the bucket. Aye, aye, first mate. More importantly, are you sure it's okay to bring an exorcist aboard? I've got my eye on her. If she does anything funny, I'll handle it. Got it. We'll be on our guard, too. It's the first part. Uh, oh. Kinda skip things, guys. Uh, happy. But we got a little trigger happy. Three good reds. Why in blazes would you, would it be Island Gan? I the skipper's course, of course, would be. There's where we're going. I gotta say, you guys look less like pirates and more like a circus troupe. Are you alright with having demons on board, Benwick? Not remotely an issue. If you're aboard this ship of misfits, you're a pirate. That's just our creed. At least, that's what the captain and the first mate always say. Speaking of the captain, what's Eifried like? Hmm, let's see. How do I put it? He's like if the sea were a person, and that person had a pointy beard. Huh. Uh, a bearded sea? Look, everybody on this ship is an outcast from society in some way. Despite that, Captain Eifried accepted us for who we are, and took us all on board. So he's a kind man. Well... Would you say that the sea is kind? How would it feel to dive in with an open wound? It would sting. A lot. Quite so. Some days he's calm and steady, and others he rages. He can be shallow, deep, even a whirlpool. Sounds like he's a little scary and hard to read. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to serve him. But that air of mystery keeps us around, and makes us want to take those jumps. At the end of the day, the dread pirate Van Eifried is one hell of a guy. He sounds like Velvet in a lot of ways. Wait, what? How so? Uh, I didn't describe him right at all, did I? Hmm. Benwick, we're changing course at once for Port Renied. Sir? What's going on? Three of our men have collapsed from the Corsair Scourge. They first showed symptoms three days ago. How are you holding up? I'm still doing all right. 
But if this really started three days ago, that means we're all carrying it, doesn't it? That's what I'm afraid of. But if we head straight to Port Renied, we should be able to get medicine there. I'll check on everyone's condition. Make sure everyone stays hydrated, including yourself, understand? Sir, yes sir. All hands, assume emergency positions. The crew's holding up well for a bunch of folks at death's door. What do you mean? Is this Corsair scourge fatal? Quite. No one knows what causes it, but it starts with a high fever and ends up with the body falling apart like sand. Like sand? Once, there was a great band of pirates who ruled the seas, but the disease spread through their ships and killed every one of them. That's why it's called the Corsair Scourge. Does that mean we've been infected as well? You humans, for sure. Only humans fall prey to the Corsair Scourge. Then it could have gotten to you too. Right, Moggy Lou? Oh, right. <gasps> Alas, that my glorious saga should meet such an ignominious end. I can't allow our vessel to die from this. If you start to feel ill, speak up. I will. All right. We'll all be helping out in the search. Everyone but Eleanor, that is. Huh? Oh, why does she get to stay? I might be dying too, you know. You're a witch. Magic yourself healthy. Now quit whining and get going. Oh, not even a witch is safe from the ravages of the Reaper's curse. The Reaper's curse? Okay, where's the herbalist? If I remember right, the Corsair's Scourge needs a particularly special medicine. Yeah. It's a wildflower called Salatoma. Its juice can cure the Corsair's Scourge. Well, doesn't sound too tricky. Let's not relax until we have it in hand. Right. Now let's get going. Hold on a minute. Won't you just be spreading the disease if everyone wanders into town? Surprisingly, no. For whatever reason, you can only catch it over the ocean waves. It's speculated it might have something to do with the salt in the air. Or maybe the microbes in the seawater. Nobody knows the cause for sure. But there are no recorded cases of people catching it on land. I see. A strange affliction indeed. We'll be back soon. You all remain on the ship. All right. Good luck out there, sir. We've got to hurry. Solitoma. Is this really going to be necessary? What do you mean, Eleanor? Oh, nothing. It's just... Well, the herb is known to work well for fevers and the like, but it tastes bad. So bad. Some say it would even bring a demon to the brink of tears. Maybe so. But better to drink it than to die, right? Oh, I'm not worried. It... it just reminded me of stories from my childhood is all. The map's getting filled in little by little. There's still a long way to go. It's a big world out there. Yeah, that's true. And a lot can happen on the waves. The far seas are unexplored territory for a reason. I'd imagine so. The seasons and the weather can change the sea completely. Oh. Do I sense a budding interest in the sea? Think you're feeling less apathetic about it now? I wouldn't say that. I was just reminded of something someone once said to me. Rokuro, always telling all of us except Eleanor to work harder. Doesn't he realize that I'm a delicate maiden too? This is workplace discrimination. I should put him on a witch trial and burn him at the stake. I don't think that's how witch trials work. <laughs> What's wrong, Eleanor? You look like you've got something on your mind. I'm just trying to figure out what Rokuro was thinking when I had Lord Shigure at the end of my spear. Rokuro threw his dagger right at my head. I thought I was dead for sure. I feel like I saw who he truly was, and it frightens me. But he and Lord Shigure are always trying to kill each other. I can't understand why he did what he did. It might have something to do with his Bushido code. What's Bushido? Is that like a sword fighter's code? It's a way of thinking. 
Be loyal to your lord. Respect your parents. Protect the weak and act with honor. You're saying that he was following this Bushido code, and he was protecting me because I was weak? He might have turned into a demon, but his memories and personality are still intact. I doubt his moral values have disappeared either. Do you really think he believes in that Bushido stuff? Carving through his enemies with a cruel and unsparing sword! Slash! Pow! Shazam! That's the true nature of a Rangetsu man! I heard that when Velvet first met him, he immediately attacked her without any provocation. I'm sure you haven't already forgotten how he turned his swords on the kid in that fight against Kurogane. I wouldn't read too much into what Magilu's saying. Rokuro lives for his sword, and that's just who he is. But I don't think he's all that bad. I thought you were the one who called him frightening. I know I said he can be a scary person, but... How do I put it? I do feel there's more to him than just wanting to cut people up. It's like... He's more sensitive to other people's emotions than he might seem to be at first glance. A sword fighter has to sense his opponents on some level, right? For a crazed demon, he's actually a nice guy. Is that it? Maybe. I don't know. It's not like I know him well enough to claim any deep personal insight or anything. You brought it up. Eh, uh, Velvet's a little upset, so there's the save. Alright, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Um, we'll continue tomorrow and uh, probably do a little of this in some Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, we shall see. So, I hope you all are enjoying and still having fun. And I shall see you the next time. Later.